Panda got me back fine. Um, got, yeah, all the way back from Bristol without a problem. So well, guys, I've had an absolute mare of a day today. I've been working on the Panda. Um, something that should be really simple uh, isn't. So and it looks like a 1-1. One, one. It's a Punto. We're doing all right on the Punto. It's only 1.4. Um, I saw that I bought it for 750, which is more than I bought the other ones for. Um, so then I looked, and it's only done 36,000 miles. So here you go, guys. Panda, all cleaned up, had a photo shoot. Adrian's been at it again. NK Van Services just dropped me off. Whoever it was that saw him at BCA today, by the way, and we gave him a shout. Classic, brilliant. Thanks for that. <laughs> he loved it. Martin. Martin, was it? Martin. All right. Cheers, Martin. Thanks for coming over and saying hi. Um, yeah, so he's done it. He's picked me up this Punto. And this is the Punto that I won the other day while I was servicing. And I forgot that I'd even bid on it. 38,000 miles on a... Was it 59 plate? I can't remember how much paid for this. I think we're in it for about a thousand pounds, including the delivery, I think. I'll have to double check. We'll go back and check my numbers in a minute. It was a grade four, but yeah, as I said, 38,000 miles. Sorry, 36,000 miles. Grade four, so let's have a quick look at the bodywork. I mean, to be honest, initial impressions are it isn't actually bloody bad for the age. I mean, if I'm picky, there's a little bit of crazing down there and a little bit on the spoiler there. That's dried out a little bit. I mean, it would take nothing to spray that if I wanted to. Um, but down the sides, it's really straight. Bumpers are free from scrapes. To be fair, that is really tidy for the age. Oh, we've got a flat tire. I need to sort that out. That is really tidy. Very, very slight difference in silver. Or oh, I might even be being a bit too picky there. Very slight difference in silver there with the bumper, but obviously that happens with over age. Plastics, um, yeah, fade slightly differently over time. But flipping it though, guys, I mean, I've had flipping grade threes and twos are worse than this. We've got decent rubber there, lots of rubber there. Lots of rubber there. This tire does look a bit sorry for itself. It's got enough tread, it's well legal, but whether it needs replacing or not, whether it's got a flat, we'll find out. That's all good, isn't it? Well, that's a good start. Let's have a check underneath the bonnet and see what the score is there. We'll come to the interior again in a bit. Oh, so this is the 1.4. So it's the same as the 1.2s out the 500s. Um, and the other 1.2 Punto's, but just bored out to 1.4. Let's get the engine stay out. Under here, a bit grimy, but everything looks dry. We've got no oil on the main seal there. Looks like we might have a little oil. Yeah, you get this a lot with these, a bit of oil up here around the rocker cover. But nothing outrageous. Sticker's off for the cam belt. So I'll have to see if anyone history for that, but that sticker's normally there and covers up that bolt to change the cam belt, so that may well have been done. Let's have a look at the oil. Wow, that's clean. That's very clean oil. Slightly overfilled, um, but very, very clean. So I suspect we're going to find a receipt for a service that's happened very, regular, uh, very recently on that. Coolant's all good. Plenty of coolant. Yeah, looking promising. So we've just got to do the traditional run around the block now. Right, we'll leave her running, make sure she doesn't uh, overheat. Have a quick look at the interior. Passenger seat's good. Rear seats are good. The driver's seat was good. All the wear here indicates that that 36,000 miles is genuine. Pedals don't have much in the way of wear on them. And she's sitting fine. Just check their windows. We've gone through a lot of window regulators recently, haven't we? So that's working mirrors. Yeah, mirrors are working fine. Stereo. Be careful I don't get any flipping infringements. Yeah, got all of that, it's all good to go. 
no auxiliary input unfortunately on this one but yeah i mean we're looking good so far guys right traditional drive around the uh industrial state of all new buys firstly no lights at all on the dashboard and we have some fuel let's reverse up so and we'll have a little zoom around the car park sorry if it bings and boings people i can't be bothered to put the steering the seat belt on engine sounds sweet as a nut brakes well get up into second suspension is good no knocks and bangs on the speed bumps yes I've got my seatbelt on right well I think to avoid you getting annoyed by the binging and boinging uh, I'll just say that's a good little first test drive. We've got up into third. Hold on, I'll put it on for goodness sake. Bloody nerdy society. <laughs> right, um, off again, yeah. Um, yeah, we've got up into third, no problems at all. I haven't had any noises I'm happy with. Clutch is engaging fine. All seems good to me, guys. I mean, it's a very short initial drive. We'll take it for a longer one, but initial signs are there isn't any major problems with it our oh, famous last words isn't it so guys it drives all right it looks okay i've just gone through the paperwork though and i found a receipt in it for the sale of this car just four months ago so the question is why did someone buy this four months ago and has already sold it on I presumably traded it in because it's gone for auction or gone to a we buy any car why have they done that? As far as I can see, it's driving fine. The only thing I know with these that can be intermittent is the dreaded ECU issue. So I'm gonna to have to put some miles on this because I'm not gonna trust retailing it until I put some miles in it and find out why they shifted it on so darn quick. Now you saw me drive this a minute ago. I've just got it to move it again. That reverse is crunchy hear it i think we may have found our reason the forward gears i think let's, let's take it around again see it's gone in okay there that could just be the slave i guess because now i've got my foot fully down it's not doing it yeah it's not doing it with my foot fully down which it should be, obviously, for the clutch, but... <laughs> I don't know, I can't decide if we've got a problem there or not. I need to do a few more miles on it. I mean, going forwards... Saturday afternoon, no one else is here. I can drive to my heart's content. It goes for all the other gears absolutely smoothly, so it could just be... just be... It could be that we've got a, a reverse synchro problem, but that would mean taking the gearbox out, but that's nothing I haven't done a million times on these before. Well, not a million times, but... See, it goes into reverse fine now. I mean, if it's the slave, one would think I'd have similar problems getting the other gears, but I don't at all. I only have a problem and if I do have a problem, I don't even know if I do have a problem or not. Well, comment below, I'm sure you think I've got lots of problems. <laughs> oh, we've got Bluetooth. Um, that's strange, because isn't it? Normally USB, a uh, auxiliary input when you've got that on these. But I'm not seeing one. Well, hold on, what have we got up here? Two seconds. Oh yeah, there's USB connection there, but not auxiliary. That's the old Windows one. That's a pain in the bum, that. Anyway, sorry, it's back to the matter in case. Yeah, get reversed there without crunching. Take my foot off the clutch, depress it again. That was a bit resistant. 
Yeah, I don't know. I don't know where it merits a gearbox, to be honest. Because it goes into gear cleanly enough without... Uh, it's only every now and then. It's a bit... It seems a little crunchy. It may be something to sell the car. You know the score with me, guys. If I think it's doing that, I'll either do the gearbox or I'll sell it with it like that and advise the person um, accordingly. And what I do sometimes is I'll say, like, you know, I don't think there actually is a problem with the gearbox at all, but what I'll do is extend the warranty out for, like, six months on it. Um, and uh, if you do have a problem, I'll sort it out for you. But I don't initially think there is any problems. It may just be... See, it's going in again fine there. Maybe I just had the seat too... Because I've moved the seat forward a bit now. Maybe I just had the seat too far back because I did have it all the way back a second ago. But uh, anyway, enough guessing. Let's put some miles on it. Uh, not this weekend. I'm not going to take it home this weekend. A lot of you, like I said, that's one of the phrases I use a lot. Um, but uh, I'll drive it in a week a bit and I'll see if it's something I consistently have a problem with or not. But there was someone that said they were going to swing by this evening and have a look at it parked outside. Um, because they wanted to get first dibs on it. So we will uh, see if that happens or not. I've had a few people say they're turning up today and they don't. Which is the bane of our lives. But I'll leave it parked out here. So they can have a look around it if they want to. Let's get back inside and get some content ready for you guys. Right guys, so all between uh, about 5 o'clock and 5.30, it's all, all kicked off and happened. Someone came and looked at the Panda, bought it straight away. Uh, 1990 we agreed a deal on, let £95 off. So the Panda sold. So that was up for sale for, what did we do? We listed it uh, on Friday night and it sold Saturday afternoon. And the Punto that turned up, um, what was that off? That was off the trailer for about an hour before the couple came right that said they were going to come and look tonight. Um, uh, sorry, uh, come and look Saturday night. And um, But they came up a little bit earlier than expected. I was still here, took it for a little drive, and they've bought that at full asking price. Um, so the only problem with it is, well, there isn't a problem as such, is that gearbox side of things. I think... Um, it, it's like I say it's crunching into reverse other than that it seems fine it's whether I do the gearbox what I might have to say to them if I do the gearbox is look it's a 500 pound job to do the gearbox in terms of buying the gearbox fluids labor that kind of stuff so I can eat a little bit of that but not all of it so do you want to pay me another couple hundred pound and I'll put a gearbox in it or do you want another couple hundred pound off sorry 300 pound off and have it with the gearbox crunching when it goes into reverse because let's face it reverse is used you know not anywhere near as often as all the rest of the gears and you know i've only any clunches every now and then so the synchro is obviously not great in in reverse but it's not by any means unusable because you can do it without it crunching so i might give them the two options on it i've got a very disappointed lad who wanted this car and really badly wanted this car but the other people were first so if they don't want to do that perhaps i'll offer it onto them but we'll we'll have a look into it just a quick little point on the Punto, interesting one with that is the couple that bought it have been looking for a car for a son for their while, for a while. And they did go and look at more expensive cars, 2014 Fiat 500 Sports, that kind of thing, around the 5K mark. Now what was interesting to me is they were looking at those 500 Sports at main dealers, and the main dealers were saying no warranty. A 2014 car at five grand, they were going to give no warranty. It was just your standard consumer rights. They wouldn't refurbish the alloys and they wouldn't service it. They would sell it as is, no warranty, for a five grand. So they said the fact that you're going to give us a warranty on a 59 plate car um, says it all. Which um, it did, it is interesting that the main dealers, you know, I mean, they're asking strong money for the car and it's not that old a car, 2014. Uh, but they won't offer any warranty on us all. Interesting, eh? Right, guys. So as you know, yesterday, Saturday, the Grey Punto came into stock um, and immediately sold within an hour to the couple that had been looking to get a car from us for a while and had in, in, in advance said that they were going to pop over Saturday even before I prepped the vehicle to have a look. Um, so they've bought the vehicle. They did test drive it, um, but... Um, I don't know if they reversed it at all now as you saw and just seen in the video there a couple of times I was getting into reverse I was getting it crunching and I found that receipt to show the car had sold to somebody only four months earlier so 
I did a little bit of research. I did a bit of Facebook stalking on the name on the receipt and thought I'd track down because the, the person had a double barreled surname. And I thought um, they were in uh, Malvern in Worcestershire. Sure, sure, sure. I don't say any better than the Americans, do I? Um, and uh, yeah, so I thought I'd have a chance of trying to track them down. And I found someone that I thought it was that person, sent them a message um, that I've put here basically in front of you here. So uh, hi, obviously I've deleted the name. Sorry for the approach, but I just bought a Fiat Punto from auction and found Jenny sold it after a few months of ownership. I thought I might save myself a ton of hassle by finding out what the issue might be with it so I can fix it before sale. And apologies for the approach if it offends. So obviously, you know, some people not, might not like to be tracked down like that. Um, but obviously everything is, if you've, you know, open to be seen on Facebook, the name was on the paperwork. So worst case was they said they didn't appreciate that approach and told me off, I guess. But anyway, turns out the person was really, really cool. Um, they said there wasn't anything major wrong with it. I just didn't like it, which is interesting. So get, <laughs> there wasn't anything major wrong with it. I just didn't like it. I had it checked over by my garage for a few minor issues, and they said it was in great condition for its age. My main issues were the fact that it crunches very noisily into reverse all of the time. Well, it doesn't actually do it all of the time. Um, I think it depends how hard you are with it. And it stinks of petrol is when the heater is on. I had to open the windows and it's a nightmare to put petrol in as the petrol cap spins. Now, petrol caps on the Fiat 500s, the Fiat Puntos, the, um, they do spin. You have to hold them before you turn the key. And it's something before I even send one of them out the door. I always show someone how to do it because otherwise they uh, they really struggle with it. I saw someone at Halfords once trying to get sold a petrol cap because they thought it was broken, but um, didn't realize how you have to do it. So I always cover that with people when I sell them the 500s um, or the Puntos. In terms of the stinking when the heater's put on, well, that's going to be the breather pipe in the engine bay. They crack over age and they do exactly that. It's well known. Do a bit of Googling on it. it comes up all the time. So I haven't had a chance to look at that yet, but I imagine I put a £12.50 pipe on there and it'll stop that from happening. Um, I'll check the petrol cap out, but I suspect it's just the fact it spins. So anyway, hope this helps. How cool is that? Really, really cool they did that. And like I said, they could have got their, uh, their bum in a sling about it and... Uh, told me to naff off but um yeah they even sent me actually the uh, the receipt they dug out the receipt from uh, taking it to the local garage for check over um and uh, that's that was really really cool of them so yeah really appreciate the help massive thanks again my pleasure so we now know that what i found with the gearbox is the reason the car was shifted on um so what was i do at this point i've had a hundred pound deposit put down on the car the people have driven it they've not said anything about crunching gearbox um, because I can only suspect they didn't put it into reverse or they did and it didn't do it on the time they did it but anyway so you know me up front with everything so um, I bunged them an email across so uh, here we go I found a fault in testing this weekend a week's uh, reverse synchro which is true obviously I found it this weekend checking it out tried it again after I left again I didn't actually have it happen a couple of times but then it did happen um, so now I've confirmed there is definitely a weak uh, reverse synchro uh, on occasion you get a crunchy engaging reverse all other forward gears are uh, synchros are perfect which they are um and usually it's second gear synchro as that's most used so if there is a, a synchro gone in my experience it's normally second uh, second gear um so i've put there's two solutions a replacement gearbox oh, by the way i've emailed them because i want this in writing if they agree to anything obviously i want it in writing plus it's a sunday so i didn't want to ring them and um, we can have a chat later on but i wanted the options in writing so they could discuss them beforehand um, and know exactly there's no confusion exactly what I'm offering so I thought yeah there's two solutions a replacement gearbox or to live with it is it's slightly intermittent and a gear that's only used in frequent low speed obviously we don't use reverse for prolonged periods of times um, and all that often so I do think it is something you could live with on that box um, and it'll probably be that way for a long time yet um, it's as it's a 500 pound job including refurbished box fluids and labor so yeah the box is like 350 plus VAT from our refurb guy then you've got to put the gearbox fluids in um, and obviously the time there's a cost to the time isn't there so um that's probably a very modest 500 pound i'm putting down there i probably could get a, a a cheaper used box for about 150 quid maybe but there's no guarantees the synchros will be good in that um the refurbished ones come with a warranty anyway so that's over 20 percent of the car's sale value and you simply don't have kind of margin at this price point which you don't it kind of really eats up all the profit on the cars 
give or take a few quid here and there. So it gives a few options. It's um, one we do the work on a 70 30 split on costs. You foot uh, 350, uh, sorry, we foot 350 and you foot the extra 150. That is 70 30 split, isn't it? Pretty sure it is. <laughs> um, or we simply discount the car. Uh, by the 350 cost we would have had so if they chose option one above we've got about 350 cost there not counting our time um, so we could just discount by that cost giving your son uh, to bank the savings and drive the car with a known fault but then what we could do is put a warranty specifically on the box against total failure i.e that reverse fail completely for six months with the agreement we do the work for the fixed price of 350 all in so does that kind of make sense he, ke he keeps the 350 quid in his bank account um, I'm saying I don't think the problem that they'll get more serious with the gearbox as in totally failing but I'll put my money where my mouth is and I'll still do the box for 350 if in you know within the first six months it fails completely um it obviously you couldn't keep the 350 and you still have you do the box because then you know what's the point of option one and of course option three is we refund your deposit and we cancel the sale so yeah I'm happy to just give me a deposit back cancel sale I'll advertise the car with a known fault um and uh, the lower price point, and I'm sure it will sell because I got a couple of people that were very disappointed they didn't get a chance to get in on the car. So it says, uh, and I said, uh, as, as I said, I'd like to eat the cost completely, but you can imagine margins are low on some 5k cars, 10% as a rule uh, after all costs, which is about right. Um, hence, I've taken out the name of the dealer I mentioned that they told me about, um, the main dealer. Uh, hence, their no warranty stance on cars of this age. Um, that's why they do it, isn't it? Because the, the cars have costs. Uh, you know, when you have a, a small cost on one of these cars, it can wipe out all the profit. So it makes it uneconomical to repair. You're better selling as is. And so then I've gone on to say, it's only that the car is so good otherwise, already has an long MOT, that we can consider fixing, which is true. If I still had to put an MOT on the car and do other bits and bobs on it, um, I, it just wouldn't be worth doing any of this. But because I don't have to spend money on those things, I can afford to foot a major part of the cost of putting a box in it. And I put my personal feelings, I'd leave it as it is at this age and price point as the gearbox is not going to fail or break. Well, any, it, I should actually have specified <laughs> within any reasonable period of time. And I suspect to be lived with indefinitely. Um, and with the greatest respect to your son, this is a long sentence and I should have, my, my grammar's not great. Um, <laughs> as a first car, it's likely to get a bump and the money might be better in the bank. Um, but with the six months warranty, uh, a six months warranty with the fixed price fix he offsets the risk so what i'm trying to say there basically is if he drives it as it is and worst case scenario it fails he knows he can get it repaired for 350 quid which is considerably less than it would cost normally to get that fix done um but i'm happy to go with whatever you feel is best as you can see i'd rather be frank and upfront and not make the sale which is true i you know the reason i don't have to stress about people coming back to the garage turning up this that and the other is because if i think there's a problem i tell them about it and then I don't have to worry about what I did or didn't say to somebody. And if this guy says no to the sale, then fair enough. If he says yes to it and he agrees to those things, we both know exactly where we are. And again, we haven't got any stress. So sorry for the lengthy mail. I wanted to make all the options clear. We can, of course, have a chat on Monday. So like I said, I put it in writing, not because I'm not prepared to speak to the guy, but because if he agrees to any of it, I want it down in writing. And um, and then we can obviously have a conversation out of that. But uh, this will form the basis of any agreement we have. So what do you think, guys? What do you think of my offer? Comment down below. Is that fair? Um, do you think, um, yeah, basically do you think it's fair? Um, do you think I've treated him as I should do and it's a fair offer, bearing in mind the situation? Um, would you have been happy if I'd approached it in this way with you? Let me know. I'm always interested in your thoughts, so uh, bang us a comment down below. But uh, yeah, big thanks out to that lady who gave us that information. That was really cool of her. Right, guys, I've come in this morning and it's time to have a bit of a confession. Firstly, I'm a blithering idiot. You all know that by now, um, having seen the last video. Reverse gear doesn't have a synchro, so the gearbox hasn't gone on that grey punto. And as it's a push clutch, the fact that it's all the way down means the clutch itself has probably gone so the car actually needs a clutch not a gearbox doesn't it so i live and learn guys i always tell you i'm not a mechanic so i'm learning um as i as i go <laughs> and um sometimes i'm too honest too early i should have held off messaging that customer until i had some further advice um so yeah so it looks like we're gonna be putting a clutch in that gray punto 
Um, my other confession is I've put some bids in today and uh, because obviously the Punto selling, the Panda selling, I'm still looking for little cheapies. And um, I've got to put a confession about a bid on there that really doesn't make a lot of sense. It's, it's this one here, Citroen C4 1.6 16 valve by Loeb. I have this real problem with anything that was sort of limited edition, small edition, you know, you know, I had my 106 Rally. Um, I had the uh, Schumacher Fiat Stilo as well, a little while back, I think before I started the channel. I love that car. If I see anything like this, I bid on it. And I know at the end of, a, it's, at the end of the day, it's just a Citroen C4 with some stickers on it and some white wheels, but I just couldn't resist. Um, my bid's not very high, it's only 500 quid. Um, I don't expect to win it. I think it had 90,000 miles on it. I think it didn't have a very long MOT on it. It's just, I don't know, I just love these limited edition type cars. And if I had a big shed somewhere, I'd just be filling them up full of them, just letting them sit there. So, um, yeah, that's my second confession. One, I know nothing about gearboxes. And two, I bid on a Citroen C4, which is, by all accounts, I'm told a terrible car. <laughs> what else have I had a bid on? Uh, Ford Fiestas, a couple of Ford Fiestas, 1.2s with higher mileages. If they've got reasonable mileages, they're just out of the price range I want to be in. I don't want to be over 3K at the moment. The way things are shifting under 3K, and the way things aren't shifting over, I just don't want to get into that. And I guess at the end of the day, we are sort of spit and sawdust garage. So that kind of makes sense where we should be price wise. So um, I've been on a couple of Ford Fiestas that both have the higher end of the mileages. I think they're around hundreds, 110s, but I should be able to get them in under under three grand, 1100 quid on a, on a 2011 and 1300 on a 2009. Don't know why I bid more on that, must have a lot lower mileage on it. Um, yeah, I'm not entirely sure why I bid that high on that one. I forget now, I did all this last night. So um, we'll see how we get on with them, but Fiestas are, are very popular at the moment, so I don't expect to win those. Then we had a Kia Rio. You know I can't help but bid on a Kia Rio, guys. Uh, this is a 2011, had low mileage, 60,000 miles on it. Uh, and I think it had a new ticket on it as well. And its MOT history was really clean. I bid 1,100 quid on it. Um, I might only make 500 quid on it and, and have it out of the door in 1995. But the books is worth 2495. I just don't find I don't tend to sell around book. Um, so I can either make 500 quid on it and keep it under 2K or, or get it up a little bit higher and take it into the sort of two and a half range. We'll see. Then obviously that, that lobe. <laughs> Fiat 500, you know I sell Fiat 500, no problem whatsoever. Um, it's a white lounge, which is kind of the the uh, the vanilla of Fiat 500s. It's the one that always sells, no problem at all. So the color doesn't offend. The lounge is a spec everybody wants because boys, as a general rule, don't want 500s. And if they do ever want a 500, it's a sport, but there's very few of them out there looking for them. So if you go for lounges, you don't tend to tend to have a problem shifting them on. Bid 1800 on that. That will be at well over 3K, but I never have a problem selling Fiat 500s at a higher price point. But again, it ties in with the, you know, we are an Alfa Romeo. I'm selling out of an Alfa Romeo Fiat, especially so that people are prepared to pay a bit more for cars when they are Fiat's and Alphas here um, than they are for other makes. Then we've got a Toyota Igo in white. Again, can't go wrong with the Toyota Igo in white. The, the, it's got the alloys, it's a decent spec one. Bid 1200 quid on that on a 2011. Little Nissan Micra, they do sit around, guys. I know they do, you know, they've either sold straight away or they've sat around. But I've bid at a point where this one can go out the door super cheap. It had a really good MOT history. It was up on the miles, about 110, I think. But the MOT history was really good and it had a current MOT on it. So it was worth a low bid. Uh, stick it out the door cheap. And then uh, a VTR, I have been avoiding flat red cars. I know I'm saying that on a bid on three here. Obviously, the low was all in red, I think. So... That doesn't make count, but um, I have sold red VTRs before, and um, this again is a cheapy little one, so I've had a bid on that. So we'll come back later on and see how I've got on with those. Um, I have to be a bit careful because only two cars are going out. I'm still a bit short on space. Uh, I don't know why I do. <laughs> I do want to win that C4. I do want to win that. I'm always, even as I'm saying, I shouldn't have bid on it. I'm always thinking going on and putting the bid up a little bit. Um, but I know I shouldn't. It's not like it's even a low mileage one. So on the Punto, with Stu's help, bled the clutch, um, made no difference. So in fact, probably got a little bit worse. So we're gonna put a new clutch in it. I think that's what's needed. So I'll go over and get that priced up now. And um, obviously it's the same amount of labor as it was to change the gearbox out really, as to put the clutch in it. So I'm not really making any savings there. There's a small saving on the parts side of things. 
um, but I'll calculate it all up and then discuss again with the customer once I've got the clutch in and confident that's what it is I'll go back to them on that deal we did on the price side of things and see where we are oh, I had a look at the breather hose as well big sorry I've got a torch on me big splits here so that's why she was getting petrol smell into the cabin I've got one of those on 11 or an order 11 quid so I'll swap it over and that's just solve that problem well here's our breather pipe from the Pinto I think there's a pretty good chance that's what has been causing the smell in the cabin when the heat is on because that is cracked all over so yeah, a new one was uh, 11 pound plus of that so we'll get that on see if we solve that problem too so doing the punter myself the uh, clutch save a little bit of money um, and I can pass that back to the customer as well um, so what I'm doing first get the top end get the battery out battery tray out disconnect the slave on top of the gearbox disconnect the gear linkage it's got two bolts that need to come off there still and then get the top bolts out there'll be a starter bolt motor bolt over there no doubt and then a couple of gearbox bolts so get all those out now then we'll lift the car up pop the drive shafts either side um, take the those two bolts out the back of the gear linkage out take the starter motor out um, take the rest of the bolts off the bottom leave the end probably leave one in leave the engine mount bolts on uh, the gearbox bolt mounts on until we're ready to to move the gearbox out of the way um, so then we'll lower it back down and do those again so it's just it's just all unbolting stuff guys at the end of the day nothing's particularly complicated it's just time consuming so uh, yeah let's get cracking So that's as much as I can do on a top end. Gear link is disconnected, bolts out, starter motor bolt out, a slave cylinder off, earth strap disconnected, wiring loom that runs across the top of the gearbox disconnected. So all of that is good to go. So now we need to get up in the air and start working our way around the bottom and the drive shafts. So underneath here we've got our rear engine mount that needs taken out. The uh, two mounts here for the um, brace that goes across and the rest of the gearbox bolts here then we've got the drive shafts to pop out and then the last thing holding it up will be the mount at the top there so again oh we've got to get the starter motor out the back here just up there we've taken one bolt out it's got to take the second bolt out and we've got a big uh, uh, 18 mil sorry they're 18 mil bolts uh, 18 mil bolt there to take out as well it's all pretty much the same as all the 500s I've done really, it's all looking pretty similar. I'll give this subframe a little wire brush and a stone chip while I'm at it as well, you know I can't resist a bit of that. So we've got the gearbox out and what we can see is some very worn edges to the fingers and the ones at the top are very worn, the ones at the bottom, the ones at the top have no lip on them and the ones at the bottom have a lip on them so I think the clutch has been misaligned when this has been put in and been wearing unevenly. Also. The release bearing is uh, bronze and you can hear it being graunchy so it's definitely worth doing this we'll sort the release bearing out swap the clutch out well have, i'll show you the clutch when we get out we'll have a look at the condition of that's like so the clutch itself isn't actually that worn guys it's actually got plenty of life left in it so we're not exactly sure what the problem is possibly that misalignment is what's causing the cl the crunching so yeah, here's the new clutch, here's the old clutch, here's a lot of wear difference, the difference is the worn fingers here, here's a new one, you can see how much higher they're sitting up, higher they're sitting up, how badly worn those are, so we think basically it's not being proper, properly compressed in there, therefore the problem engaging the gear and the reason the bite points low down, so we'll get this in, fingers crossed that's fixed it. So guys, I went poking around on the sump, found a little patch on it, poked around a little bit, and drip drip oil. So we're now putting the sump on it as well, which to be honest, while I've got the gearbox out, isn't too much of a biggie, because, well, I haven't put the gearbox in fully yet, I've left the plate off, I can get to all the bolts on it. Um, sorry, this might be some grease on the camera, I'm absolutely lagged, guys. So yeah, so now we'll be putting the sump on it as well. 
These fits love to do those sumps, don't they? There we go, guys. Sump off. So we've got to clean that up now, get all the old gasket off, and then get the new one on. What a game, eh? I'll be pulling another late tonight. I want to get it finished up tonight, ready and out the door for some of those cars I've bid on potentially coming in. So, uh, yeah, enough recording. Let's get cracking. So I left last night, um, having finished putting the clutch and the sump back on the Punto, but I was getting a, a contacting noise in the engine bay when I turned the engine on from what sounded like the flywheel. Um, and a little bit of a blow from the exhaust where I put it back together. To be honest, I'd had enough of it by that point. Um, I said to Stu I was gonna leave it on the ramp and uh, come back to it in the morning. Now, bless him, I'll come in this morning and um, with a fresh set of eyes, he's got underneath and looked that I've put the uh, the bottom plate that covers the bottom of the bell housing. Um, where I put the sump on, I actually had the plate over the two nuts at the end that hold the sump on. I'd obviously put it in at that angle slightly in my sort of late night hurry yesterday and it was contacting the flywheel. So he took it down, put it back in again. I'd never actually tried to put the car in gear or anything like that because I was worried it might be something else going on, but it was super simple. He fixed that and he put a new gasket on the exhaust for me. Um, so that's what happened before I got in this morning. So ma massive thanks to Stuart for that. Um, there we go, no crunch. I know everybody says the Punto's all crunch going into reverse because there's no um, no synchro, but it shouldn't have been as bad as it was. And now you can see there's no noise at all. So uh, our customer has a new crutch release bearing, a new clutch, a new sump, um, and fresh oil, obviously. So happy bunny, especially for a car that, you know, two and a half grand. Um, I uh, challenge anyone to sort of like meet the level of prep at this price point that we do with our cars. Rightio, let's, so uh, we've got a couple more things to do. I agreed to polish the headlights for them. I've stone chipped the wheels um, and swapped the good new ones to the front and the front to the rear. Because uh, I thought it was, you know, rotate the wheels because they had more tread on the back. And uh, then it should be ready to go. Right guys, the Punto is all done. Given her, obviously put on the sump, put in the new clutch, the reverse, no crunching at all anymore. Fresh oil, fresh gearbox oil. Outside's being machine polished and then all the rubber's treated. And as you see, she's looking very, very smart. Now I've done a photo shoot for her because as I always say, um, even if the cars sell straight away before I get to put them up for her advertising, I like to put them up on the site just to show the turnover of cars. And I like to advertise it for a little bit just to see if I have other people coming to me about the car, um, just to gauge whether other people would have been interested at this price point or not. Because at the moment, I don't know whether this would have sold at that price or not although I did have a lot of interest, didn't I, straight away on Facebook. But yeah, I like to put it up anyway, just showing the turnover of cars, show the type of cars we do. But um, yeah, she's come out really, really clean. Inside was immaculate. I mean, 34,000 miles, it's, it's 36,000 miles, sorry. It was gonna be, wasn't it? I mean, the interior needed very little. It's all in excellent nick. I, of course, spent time on the engine bay as well. That got a proper clean up. Uh, there we go. All the pipes and all that kind of stuff got all properly cleaned so the engine bay looked as best it could. Uh, when I changed that breather pipe off over in the side there, didn't I? When I did the breather pipe, I took off the air, uh, obviously, the air box got in and cleaned all around the throttle body and all that kind of stuff. So I'm confident that for the money, this is as good a car as uh, someone can get and I've put as much as I can into it. Um, should be a cracker of a car for them. Like I say, con considering they were looking at uh, cars nearly five grand at main dealers on 2014s and they wouldn't give them a warranty at all. I'm not surprised they're happy with the level of preparation I'm doing on this car for the money and good on them to give me that little bit of extra cash. Because like I say, I wouldn't have been able to retail it and do that stuff realistically. Uh, it wouldn't have been worth doing, I'd have sold it as is. So they wanted it doing, they're prepared to contribute something towards it. And it's as I always say, guys, honesty is the best policy. Um, we both knew where we stood with it. It was all agreed and uh, happy bunnies. So um, on to the next one. So guys, we have had a win from all those bids. We didn't win my lobe, boo. 
Um, I forget how much I went for. I took it out of it. I think it went for about 800. Um, so yeah, gutted, but <laughs> I didn't have any real need for it. Yeah, I only won one out of all those. I won the Citroen C1 VTR for 800 pounds on a 2012 with uh, 80,000 miles, which would seem cheap, but um, I, I, I think I did look at this, but I don't know why I didn't pay attention. Boosh, there we go. Dent there, big dent in the cell. In the grand scheme of things, I mean, book for this car is about on a 2012 with those miles is about two and a half grand. So we're going to be in it about a thousand pounds by the time we get it here. So there's a good margin left in it, but um, these are quite tough to pull out on the sill here. Two options, cut it out, weld a new one in. Or second option is probably I'm going to go for weld tabs along here and then use my 10 ton puller put it to the um, put it on the four poster over here with a chain to the tabs and then just pull this all back out again and then bodywork it and paint it that one I won't be able to get behind the skin there so I'll have to clean that paint off and use my spot weld puller to pull that out as well so I'll need to paint it here and along here hopefully here I'll blend into the door the sills not such a big issue but we know what reds can be like it's either that or we um, let's go back and look at the images again. It's either that or we basically sell it as is. We've got that dent on there, scrape on the bumper there. The rest of it seems pretty tidy. Um, we could sell it as is, maybe 1495 it, 2012, 80,000 miles with a long MOT. Uh, we could 1495 it as is and let someone just have a really cheap runabout. Um, or we do those repairs and uh, maybe 1995 or 2195 it. Comment down below, guys. What's your thoughts? Which way to go with it?